I told you about the relevance of these Moses scrolls. Another example, Akhi, is the law code. The law code. As you know, I already told you a couple of times, when we talk about corruption of the Bible, how many times, Akhi, I've been saying, there are many layers of corruption, right? Corruption doesn't occur at night. You wake up, you corrupt the text and finish. It's through years and many layers. I'll just send you a screenshot, Akhi, of this Moses cross. Couldn't you put it on? Because the narratives of the Old Testament has many holes in it. I'm going to talk about these holes. You see, Akhi, this is a diagram of the book of Deuteronomy. Yeah? Everywhere is blank and is white is what is missing in the uh, Moses cross. Things which Wellhausen already about 100 years ago was talking about that these are the priestly additions, priestly additions. Yet this uh, Shapiro scroll, Achi, this Moses cross does not have all of these later priestly additions in it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Wait. Sorry, wait. You're saying that what we're reading today here in these white areas, the, the Moses scrolls doesn't have any of these whites. You're saying that later on, the, the priests, right, decided to add in their own commentaries or their own understanding of things or eisegesis or whatever it may be. Slowly but surely, it started being added into the text to what we now see and conceive the present day Bible or the old Deuteronomy to be. Exactly. This is uh, Bellhausen wow. came with And many scholars of today accept this idea. And this is, by the way, one of the biggest proofs that these Moses scrolls cannot be forgery. You see, when this uh, Moses Shapiro guy came with this, the idea of uh, uh, multiple sources for composition of the Torah was just there. This Wellhausen was only 34 years old at the time. So this guy never, ever, ever could have known about these priestly additions. How could he remove explicitly things which already Wellhausen is talking about are priestly sources adding in it? You see, he never could have done this. This is he, one of the reasons. He kept his manuscript in a, in a bank vault for five years until he read the, the works of the, um, of, of the German revisionists like Blich. And then when he read it, he it clicked for him and then he decided to re reopen and, and try to get others to try and verify 